Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tribal Electric Tuesdays, where we dive into the technique of separating botanical particles using static electricity. If you're curious about this topic, keep watching. Today we will talk about how particle moisture affects a particle's ability to charge and thus affect its ability to separate via static separation. Static electricity is a form of electricity that stays in one place and does not flow through a conductor. It's a phenomenon that occurs when two different materials come into contact and separate, leaving one material with a positive charge and the other with a negative charge. This can be harnessed in industrial processes to separate particles based on their electrical charge. However, the success of static separation depends on several factors, including pretreatment, feeding, and charging of the particles. In this video, we will focus on the effects of particle moisture on the charging and separation process, handling the dispersion of the characteristics of the material to be processed, such as moisture content and sizing, and preventing the formation of agglomerates during the feeding phase, represent major challenges for the design of an industrial triboelectrostatic separator. Drying, classifying, vibrating, and fluidizing are commonly employed as solutions to these problems. One of the most critical pretreatment steps in static separation is drying the granular material. Moisture modifies the electric conductivity of the particles and hence their capacity to retain the charge when in proximity to an electrode. Superficial moisture also affects the tribal charging properties of the materials and as the water molecules that adhere to the surface of the particles alter the charge transfer between the bodies in contact. According to research, the separation degrades when relative humidity increases to above 50%. The environmental humidity, which determines the moisture content of hydrophilic particles, can hardly be regulated in most mineral beneficiation or recycling industry applications. Hence, heating of the materials by approximately 10 degrees Celsius immediately before separation is most often employed to circumvent high ambient humidity, though this solution might not work with hydrophilic materials which are affected by the ambient humidity that cannot always be controlled. Fortunately, as our application is typically small in scale, the control of the local environment is not only feasible, but important. We previously discussed the use of dry compressed air or gases to mitigate this issue. However, this does not address the inherent moisture on the particle surface, only its potential to gain moisture from the environment and thus affect its chargeability. In the static separation of minerals and plastics, the use of high power lamps for indirect drying of the materials during the feeding operation is typically recommended. We did try this in our first test, and as you may predict, the results were disappointing. As expected, trichomes became sticky and either clumped together or stuck to the roll separator. Particle moisture is a critical variable that must be addressed. For cold water extracts, this is typically addressed during the lyophilization stage. For keef manufactured from dry or fresh biomass, moisture may be an issue. When manufacturing keef in dry climates, especially from dry biomass, this usually is not a concern. But if manufacturing keef during humid seasons or from fresh biomass using cryogenic temperatures, particle moisture may play a more significant role in particle charge. For those that have attempted to separate keef using static separation and failed, you may want to address particle moisture. It may be necessary to freeze dry this product to eliminate moisture. Alternately, processing may be exclusively conducted during dry seasons. One phenomenon we noticed is that processing in dry days typically does not change particle moisture. This makes sense as it may take several days or weeks for particles to dry out to a state where they can be electrically charged. Also, since the trichrome secretory cavity is encased in an impermeable cuticle, we don't believe moisture plays a role internally in the particle, only externally. In conclusion, particle moisture plays a crucial role in the charging and separation of particles in static separation processes. Proper pretreatment, such as drying, is necessary to control the moisture content of the particles to ensure optimal triboelectric charging and separation performance. Moreover, appropriate drying methods that do not alter the surface properties of the particles should be used to ensure efficient separation with minimal energy consumption. I'd like to know if you have experience or ideas about this process. If so, please share in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. If you found this video entertaining and you learned something today, please consider supporting us by clicking this button here.
Much appreciated.